Agora TV. The world is thinking. Now, there are still many of you who will be skeptical of the ideas that something as crude as demography and population change can reshape the world of ideas in society. But I want to give you two examples of where I think this has already occurred. Two very prominent examples, one being the Islamic revival post-1970 in the Muslim world, and the second, the rise of the new Christian right in the United States since 1980. I'm not saying that demography is the only story behind the rise of these movements, but let's just look at the role demography has played in both. So if we consider the Islamic revival, Cities such as Ankara, Tehran, Algiers, Cairo, these were cities whose culture was predominantly secular uh, in the early and middle parts of the 20th century. However, the countryside was undergoing population explosion, the countryside being a pious, traditionally religious countryside, migrants flooding into the cities became the shock troops of Islamism. I'm not saying that this was the only thing that happened. There was the Six Day War and the end of the um, Cold War, which obviously fed into this. However, you had a constituency there which overwhelmed, to some degree, the secular culture of these places. Likewise, in the United States. In the United States, and there's a very famous article by uh, Mike Hout, Andrew Greeley, and Melissa Weil that came out, which says, well, which looks at white Protestant Americans, and it shows that in 1900, uh, amongst white Protestant Americans born in 1900, fully two-thirds were members of mainline or liberal denominations. Amongst those born in 1975, almost two-thirds were members of conservative evangelical denominations. So how does that change actually happen? Is it the fact that Episcopalians uh, are suddenly becoming Southern Baptists? Actually, it turns out there's been very little switching in that direction. The big change has come about because conservative denominations like the Southern Baptists had about a one-child fertility advantage, which they maintained through much of the 20th century. And so by the time we get to those born in 1975, you have a majority of American Protestants who are evangelicals, and all of a sudden the moral majority comes along and can tap into this ready-made base. Uh, and to some extent, that neutralizes the secularizing effects of the 1960s in American politics. So in two cases, I think demography has played a very important role in boosting religious politics.